Hey, today on the corner, we're going to show you how to do lithographs and do a fun little project. All right, stay tuned. So hey, I uh, went over to the dollar store and I picked up this little cheap little two dollar lamp here. Um, it's made of plastic, uses three AAA batteries, and it's got the um, little candle in the middle or whatever. But I was looking at it and I'm like, hey, these little frames here, these glass inserts, you know what? I bet you I could do some lithographs on the Ellie Gumars, the uh, resin printer. I've never done a lithograph on a resin printer before, so I figured, hey, why not, right? So the, my plan is going to be that I'm going to take this apart. I am going to sand it down a little bit, um, spray bomb it, maybe black or silver or something like that, give a little bit of an aging look to it, and then um, I'm figuring I could replace these little plastic windows here with lithographs. And we're going to open that up, and I don't know, can you see, yeah, it's got like a little flicker on it, right? So you can see the flicker. Here, let me turn off the light, and maybe you can see it better. There we go. So what I need to do is I'm going to take off that infuser, because these panels are going to be that infuser, right? And then you're going to have that little flickery, glowy, old-school charm sort of look. And I figure if we have the four windows with lithographs, it's going to look like an old lamp. I think it's going to be a really neat little decoration. So I'm going to um, start working on this, okay? So um, wish me luck and stay tuned and let's watch this video and uh, we'll see um, if I can pull this off, okay? All right. All right, so I've taken this apart. I've cut this through with a Dremel right now. And so this is a solid piece right here. So what I'm going to do is I want to attempt to, um, I'm just going to trim slightly around here because I want that little bulb down below or do I want the bulb I might not want the bulb I might just want to do the LED if that's just an LED um, I'm just gonna keep the LED I think I just wasted my time doing this but that's okay because when you do a project and you keep um, thinking about it and stuff like that other opportunities come to mind so I think what I'll do is I'm noticing a little couple little nooks here right so I'm thinking if that's just an LED, what I'll do is I'll end up just hot gluing that bad boy right here. Because don't forget, I don't need any of the infusion, right? I actually want a little bit of a brighter light with the flicker to kind of add to the uh, the effect. So if you look at that, that's what I was getting before. So that's kind of, I'll measure that and I'll try to keep my lithophanes within that limit. So that way I'll get the same effect with the light as I showed you earlier. Because we're just replacing one diffuser with another diffuser, right? But we're, we're using that as a lithophane. So I'm going to work on this for a little bit more, see what I can do, and I'll be back. Okay, so we've taken all the parts apart. We've gotten it all taken apart. I don't need this anymore. Um, and I literally could have 3D printed this. Any of us could. So there actually might be some models on Thingiverse. I honestly, I haven't even looked yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some of this, like, uh, injected molded, right, parts. that These aren't even drilled all the way. These ones look good. These ones look okay. Um, I'll drill these all out, and then I'll just, I'll sand it down. I'll sand all the pieces down, and then I'm going to hit it with... I think my plan is I'm going to hit it with a little bit of silver, brass, or gold first, probably just along the leading edges, and then I'll finish it up with um, just black. And then when it dries, I'll I'll kind of rough up the edges a bit just to bring out the, the undercoat, and then I'll probably weather it or something like that. But yeah, this is part A of the project. Part B of the project is coming up with the lithograms. So we'll work on one piece at a time, okay? So I'm going to go and finish this up, and I'll show you guys the spray painting part, and then we'll move on to the lithogram part. That's the part that everyone's waiting to see, right? So, but you know, it's like tease, 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 then candy, right? So, all right, so stay tuned. All right, so back, I have lightly sanded everything. Um, now you want to lightly sand this just enough so the paint will stick, right? Otherwise, I'm not sure with this cheap plastic. I don't think I can really sand too much, but you just want to give it a light little... You just want to rough it up a bit, right? That way you can get the paint to stick. That's kind of the goal here, right? 
Now, you're wondering why I'm doing this on top of a print bed for. Well, because it's really the best part of the counter space that I have right now. So, um, and I'll show you actually, uh, this is my Anycubic Chiron. That's what the print bed is. And this is my Ultra Base. And my Ultra Base lost its Ultra part of the base a while ago. So I um, use a different method for um, sticking to the base. And I'll show you that in another video. But yeah, so basically we're going to rough everything up. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to wash this right now. Uh, dry it and then I'm gonna hit it um, only because it's blue if it was a different color like black preferably um, I would just rate paint it but I think because it's blue I'm gonna throw a coat of primer on it just to be um, just to be safe all right so I'm off to do that now Okay, so I'm at the computer now, and I'm going to show you guys how to do a lithophane, at least how I do a lithophane. You, there's probably other sites out there that you can use. There's other methods. But I like to go to 3dp.rocks forward slash lithophane. L-I-T-H-O-P-H-A-N-E. Um, it's really easy. It's intuitive. It's pretty much set up for you. That you can have a bunch of different styles. I generally use flat, but I have used an outer curve before. It's kind of cool. The way you print it, it's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of different sizes and um, types, like the solid cylinder, pillar domes, dome sides, heart. Heart looks cool. That would be nice, something nice for Valentine's Day. All right, so we're going to go flat. I'm going to show you how to do this. What you're going to do is you're going to go to um, images and then you're going to find your file that you want to or your picture that you want to um, turn into a lithophane. So I'm going to grab um, let's see here I'll grab one of my dog. There we go. It's a cute little picture of my Pucci. So what it's going to do is it will automatically um, here, let's see if I can it's going to automatically convert it into a lithophane. So this is very important. You need to go to settings and you're going to go to model settings. Um, so you're going to make sure the thickness is at three millimeters, generally maximum sizes, whatever really you want it to be. Uh, my, um, my pieces of glass for that particular model are 125 mils. So I'm going to put in 125 in there. Now I'm going to have to adjust this later in the slicer and stuff, but this will give me a good um, ballpark. Now we're going to go to um, settings. We're going to go to image settings. Now you're going to want to make sure this is on positive image. You don't want it on negative, because if it's on negative, well, that's what you're going to get is a negative. All right, so you're going to have all of these. Um, you can do mirror images, you can flip the image. Um, you have a whole bunch of settings to play around with, basically. But what I'm going to show you, I'll show you one. So this is going to be my doc. So I'm going to download this image. I'm going to save it. My dog's name is Dante. That's what the file name for, by the way. All right, so once you have that, what you're going to do is, I use Prusa Slicer. Anything that you can um, adjust the scaling and the size of the model is uh, a program that you can use. So I'm going to import what I just saved, which was my Dante JPEG. So here it is. All right. So what I'm going to do is I now need to... Um, I find it easier if you actually stand it up. So I'm going to stand him up just like that. Isn't he a cutie? I know you can't really tell right now because like it's this weird photo of him, but it will all work out in the end. Now, my glass was 80 millimeters by 125 millimeters, okay? So it was 125 tall or your Z axis and your X was 80. So what I normally do is I will change automatically to 
um, 80 mils. And then I will um, adjust as I go along. So now it's 80 mils. But you see here how it's 142 mils too tall. So um, that's not going to work, right? That won't fit. I need to make this 125. Now, if I were just type 125 in here, it would scale in proportionately. Like my dog might be really squishy and look fat. And I don't want my dog to look fat, right? So we're not going to have that. So what I'm going to do is 142. We're going to actually slice this. So all I'm going to do is it's basically like cropping a photo in um, on your camera, on your phone, wherever, right? So it's 125, 135 is 10, 140 is 15. So I want to go 17.12 um, mils. So I'm going to cut it at 17.12 mils. And I want to keep the upper part, okay? So I'm going to perform the cut. And if I did that right, it should be 80 by 125. So that's exactly the dimensions we're looking at. But wait, there's more. All right, so you see the Y here? Remember how I said the Y, you want it to be about three mils thick for your lithophane? So we're gonna have to change that. But if I change this to three, it's gonna change all the other settings, right? So what we wanna do is, if I hit the back button here, and it will go back to where it was. That's the precious slice had just introduced this in the past couple of updates. So you can go backwards. I find it a really cool feature. So what you can do is a back. So you see the scale factor. You see where this little lock here is? You want to unlock that. And then you can simply change this to a three. So now it's three mils thick by 80 by 125. So that's exactly what I want. So you can um, slice and print just like this for a lithophane if you don't have a resin printer. Um, I would suggest adding a brim. I would suggest doing it at one mil or 0.1 millimeter layer height and at 100% infill. And that will give you your best quality lithophane on a FDM printer. I, however, am going to try this on a resin printer. So I have it. I have the size I want. I have it exactly how I want it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do one extra step. And I am going to export this because it's all set up for me. But I want to export it as an STL. And I'm simply going to name this Dante uh, Eligu because, no, not Meligu, Eligu. Because that's my uh, resin printer is the Eligu. So I'm going to save that. Right? So now I'm all ready to go. I can um, slice this in my resin printer. So this is uh, Chit U Box which is the slicer for a resin printer or for the LED printers, okay? Prusa slicer you can use. Uh, I've had better luck with the Chiu Box, which is the uh, stock default slicer. Um, so I'm gonna use white resin. Now the cool thing about this slicer is it has all the, uh, a lot of presets in it for a whole bunch of different printers. Like you can add several different varieties of printers here, right? There's like a ton of them, all the uh, resin printers, quite a few. So I have it currently set up for my Eligu Mars, and I am going to print this in a white resin. Now, see how it has all these profiles? That's really great. You know, they, they, they send all the time. It's almost like Prusa Slicer where they have all the filaments in there. This has, as long as you're using Eligu resin, it has the profiles, but the profiles usually work for most others. Although there are variances and there's usually a really good, you can Google a bunch of resin spreadsheets to get your settings for. But I'm going to run it on my Eligu Mars with a white resin. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, oh, not save a project because I haven't started one yet. I am going to open what I just sliced, the Dante Eligu, and I'm going to bring that in. So. 
you see how it's hanging this is the build plate here it's hanging off the sides I simply just want to rotate that bad boy uh, now this is one thing I do like about the Eligu because you know sometimes you forget your X Y and Z they're all color label so I actually just want to turn this print 90 degrees and then we're set all right now I know that here, I can actually get um, one two three four I can get all once I'm done slicing all my different models I can actually get all four on the same bow plate resin printers are cool because it doesn't matter if you slice one model this tall or four models this tall it all takes the exact same time that's what's different with an FDM printer is the more you have on the build plate the longer it takes with a resin printer because it does it layer by layer higher it doesn't matter so oops. so yeah so we got like four there like so we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice it export it and we're gonna go um start a print okay so uh we'll be back downstairs by the eligu mars all right all right so i'm back and i have some white resin here i slice the files make sure i give this a good shake now you should be here let me be an excellent role model here i'm gonna uh, grab some gloves Make sure when you're handling resin, you always wear gloves, a mask if you need to, um, safety goggles. Um, this stuff is, um, you can build up an intolerance to it. So yeah, you want to make sure that you um, take care of yourself, right? Because no one ain't going to take care of you but you. So you got to always make sure you take care of yourself. So you want to shake your resin pretty good. Right? Make sure you're all good, and you're going to shake it up, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, right? And then you're going to fill the vat. Now, with the Eligu Mars, there's a little tab back here. It's like a little well, and there's a little level on that. I think that's, to me, I'm going to say that's probably as high as you want to pour into it. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to turn the printer on. Pardon the... Uh, the paper towel here and throw the lid back on and we're going to find our print I'm hit print you probably can't see me do that here we go and then i'm going to scroll down to where my print is now i think it's that one but i can't really see there we go yeah and that's got all four of my lithographs on there at the same time. So pardon the uh, wobbly um, tripod here. I'm working on getting a better one. And we're going to start the print. Uh, I think it's about an eight hour print. So I'll probably see you in the morning. All right. So the Mars has just finished um, printing the lithographs. Um, I'm hoping... That it did a really good job. I'm going to see. I'm actually really excited about this. I'm going to take the lid off and we're going to have a quick little look at the uh, build plate here. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing gloves, right? Really important. Wear your safety gear. Um, this stuff will build up an intolerance in your system, so you want to make sure you're wearing gloves, uh, goggles, um, if you can, a respirator. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, I need to clean this. So I'm going to fill up this bin here with isopropanol alcohol, just to make sure I can, uh, give it a good little wash and then I'll give it a good little rinse and I'll take it from there. So I'm just going to add some iso. I actually want to get one of those any cubic, I, I've seen their, um, they're cure and clean stations. I think those are really, really neat. Um, I'd like to get one of those at some point in time. Um, I don't print that much off the Eligu, the Mars. So I think that I'll be okay, but I'm just gonna be careful here because I don't want to knock these too much. 
I'm going to bring them out. And let's see here. Oh, hey, look at that. I can see myself. That's awesome. Here, let me just see if I can put that in the frame. I don't want to drip too much on my machine. So I'm going to slowly but surely, um, I don't know if we can see this or not. But I'm going to drop these into my vat here. And I don't think you can see me, so I'm just going to pause and I'll come back in a bit. All right, I'm back and I've done finished the painting and I basically I've primed it I've painted it I actually hit it first with a metallic silver and then I painted two coats of flat black on top of it so I'm thinking that if it gets dinged or chipped you're gonna see the silver first so it'll look like you know real weathering sort of thing instead of seeing the blue underneath and um, it uh, looks pretty good so I got all the pieces apart here and I'm going to start putting the sucker together. I printed my lithographs over here. Um, I did have a fail or two, and I'll explain that to you. Um, this one, I don't know exactly what happened to it. This is a beautiful picture of my dog that I will show you. But, um, yeah, it's got a bit of a crease on it. And I also, um, when I was showing you um, how to um, slice the models, Remember on the uh, lithophane page from negative to positive, you have to make sure you're on a positive image instead of a negative image. Um, this is the reason why, and I'll show you that too. So I'm going to start putting this together. So we're going to take a couple of these lithographs and we're going to slide those into the side, making sure we got it all together nicely. Now you're probably wondering why I didn't actually print out a lamp or something like that and I'll actually be a hundred percent honest with you it's um, the electronics really. This thing cost me two bucks all right and I'm gonna steal a page from Adam Savage it's like basically a one-day build to do all this is you're gonna um, start your printer and then you're gonna work on sanding and painting your your lamp and then you're gonna finish it up now the reason the two bucks the electronics on this for me to buy an LED to source a switch and a power box it's gonna be way more than that so this is a super cheap economical way and it probably makes a beautiful gift too that's kind of the thing we can almost call this like you can if you were to start like you probably get this ready for Father's Day right for a your dad or something like that and that would be awesome so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and dry fit this on here and hopefully if it's all together there wow. all right whoops I had a camera accident there all right but now we're back in visit so what I've done is I've dry fitted this and I'm gonna put it together and you see the four corners it's looking really good see there's a little bit of the silver showing up there I actually kind of like that effect a little bit more there I call it kind of natural weathering um I would just almost um just really lightly with like a 400 grit or something like that just sort of touch up the edges um and then we will um you know I think it will look banging after that so what I'm gonna do now is try and put the rest of this together here um I think what I need to do is let's put the top together and put this together here. Now this is kind of a weird little thing here. Um, one in like this. And I'm gonna try my best not to. Um, there we go. Perfect. All right. I don't want to damage it too much, and I don't want to chip the paint. Um, so we're gonna try and screw this all together here. This is a separate piece. And let's just drop that in there. Um, this is going to attach to that. There we go. All right. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to screw this all together. Tighten this bad boy up. Just finger tight, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have the lamp here dry fitted. I'm just going to clip this lid on here. I think these are just pressure fits. So, one. so I literally, I just moved into my garage. Well, I am in my garage, but um, 
There's your lithogram light. It's got the flame flicker. I really like that. Um, there's me and Raj. That's actually my profile picture. That's a 3D printed battle droid from Star Wars, which is quite awesome. I'm really impressed with him. Uh, and there's my little doggy. Isn't he cute? His name is Dante. Oh, and there's my little doggy Dante again. And that's uh, Ziggy, our bearded dragon. She is a beautiful little girl. But yeah, so this is... Um, oh, and that's my hoard of toilet paper in the background there, in the garage for the, you know, the COVID thing. So um, yeah, this I'm really happy with this. I think it turned out really cool. Um, a nice little gift for somebody and a really good um, tutorial and educational piece on how to make uh, lithographs, right? So look at that. Isn't that uh, the coolest thing? Like I want to thank, you know, um, I think I got the idea for the black lamp from Adam Savage. He did a one day build about a month ago, I think, a couple months ago. He did it for his um, rickshaw cart. Um, and he did it a little different. I'm like, hey, that would be kind of cool with lithographs, right? So. I figured I would try the lithographs and you know what I like the resin they look really cool um, it doesn't really justify it um, of course you in person is always a better view but um, you know what hey if you like this video thank you very much for hanging out till the end um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'm gonna be doing uh, some more videos and hopefully you'll come and join me for them all right okay peace out